hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get-out-of-hell-free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live-life-to-the-fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts. And that not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real. It is living. It is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through of all people. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people, but he is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. Amen. Buckle up and hold on. Praise God. Welcome, everybody. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know who I am, I'm uh, Aaron Smith. I'm the associate pastor here at Freedom Biker Church. And I am free. Amen. Amen. Uh, Preacher Jim had a pool tournament this weekend. And he was hopefully going to be in, win the trophy and not be here today. But things didn't work out so well, and he's here today. I mean, but uh, yeah, it worked out pretty good because he's, like, he's, he's able to be here. Uh, God is good. Did I lose you? Am I one? Okay. So, uh, we're going to do the pledge to the, our flag, the United States of America. Amen. Amen. We respect our flag. We respect uh, the people who died for our country and served for our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know, one of the, my favorite parts of that, uh, the pledge is, it says, to the republic. Amen. We're, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. Take time and search that out. There's a big difference. I know the liberal media is trying to convince us that we're a democracy. But read the Constitution, listen to our pledge. It says we're a republic and we're a nation under God. So we're... God is still sovereign, amen. And I don't care what they try to do or what they try to say, his sovereignty isn't going to change, amen. So we have a couple of announcements to go through. First thing I'd like to do is thank the worship team for their hard work and dedication. Amen. God has uh, richly blessed them with a lot of talent, uh, a lot of hard, a lot of practice, a lot of practice, a lot of time before God. Uh, Artie, he's back here to sound. He's really wouldn't be what we are without him, amen. amen. Uh, the Hudson Rod went very well yesterday. It was a little misty, a little rainy. Uh, the Red Line uh, American Legion Riders, a lot of them were here today because they have a meeting, I believe, today, their monthly meeting. But that, that was... Uh, just an awesome ride. It was a little wet, but you, the, the time and the fellowship everybody had together and the, memor the memorial of the, the children that have passed and going to each stop and, and see each park and seeing uh, their bench that was dedicated for them in their memory and just having a, a moment of prayer and fellowship there was just very impactful. 
and the time and dedication that they put into on that ride and the regional police department and Springsbury Township Police Department had blocked some intersections for us and uh, things like that. Uh, just uh, a thank you to, to the police departments for doing that and all the hard work Jeff and everybody put in to that ride. Amen. It was just a, a good day. There won't be any coffee house this month on September 22nd because bike night falls on that same night. Celebrate Recovery will be at the Living Word on September 28th at 7 p.m. because there will be a conference going on at this facility, so we won't have access to this part of the building. So we'll be doing Celebrate Recovery at the Living Word. There's uh, little flyers back out at the coffee bar, and I think at the uh, information booth that you can find out more information. Uh, ride next week, Saturday. September 15th to the VA hospital. I believe that's canceled. Uh, see Phil or uh, Jeff for more information about that if you're planning on going to that. Uh, Biker Babes on September 29th at 9 a.m. are having a little get together at the uh, York Township Community Park. See Penny for more information on that or Jackie. There's also some flyers out at the coffee bar if you want to know more about that. Uh, the, daily, the new daily breads are in. If anybody wants a new daily bread, this is a good way to get in the Word of God in the morning. It's a good devotional. We have them sitting around different places. If you've been looking for them, they're finally in. Uh, Cover 6 canines. They, they're doing a new run of t-shirts, and they have a sign-up sheet back to the information booth if anybody's interested in getting a new Cover 6 t-shirt. Uh, keep the Neely family in your prayers. Uh, Donna nearly lost her stepfather and her brother Blackie is in the hospital. Uh, I'd like to, after after church service, have a special prayer. If anybody's interested in coming front and praying for that family and, and praying for Blackie, he really needs your prayers. He's in the hospital. I don't know if he's going to live or not. So we're going to we're going to come forth and pray for him after service. And today is Lori Altman's birthday. Everybody want to give her a good shot? Shout out. So we're going to take an offering. Uh, always remember there's no mission fee. Uh, if you give what you give, that the Lord leads you on what you want to give. Uh, whatever you give will be used for the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's not abused in any way. Amen. So we're going to pass, pass the boots.
don't know about you, but I like that song. I mean, there's some churches in uh, your county may not think that's totally theologically correct, but that's man. Yeah, we don't care what they think. <laughs> How about that? When I die. So I like to start start the message with uh, the scripture out of John, John chapter eleven, uh, verses eleven through fourteen. Amen. After saying these things, he said to them, "Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him." The, this, uh, the disciples said to him, "Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover." Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. So a couple years ago, a uh, tree happening out in York City, and it was pretty, it wasn't real big, but everybody was pretty excited about it. And a lot of people were going out. I forget what night it was. It, it was an off night. It wasn't a Saturday or a Sunday or anything like that. So we start going going out there once in a while. And I had a slight check in my spirit. Didn't know what it was all about, what the check was for. But it looked like they were doing a lot of good things. They were feeding people. They were helping clothe people. They were uh, having services. Every once in a while, someone would get healed. Just different things going on. And a lot of the churches throughout the community were giving them money and you know they, they were just really on fire about this place right so I went out a couple of times and one time I'm sitting there and the guy that was up giving the message uh, was saying a couple of different things and then there was a young man whose uh, father had passed away and he he got excited because he, he just just blurts out my my dad just died the other day, and I'm, I'm glad to know that he's in heaven because he just trusted Christ as his Savior before he died. And that quick, the man said to him, your dad's not in heaven, right? Just that quick. And, and said that, uh, you don't go to heaven when you die. You go to this soul sleep. And I was like, what? Right? <laughs> so there, there, there this che little check that I had started to, I started to see what was going on, right? They were teaching the gospel according to the gospel of Christ. They were preaching a false gospel. So uh, he said, "He said to me, I, I, me and another pastor friend went and talked to him, and we said, hey, you know, that's not biblically correct.' And he said, give us 20 minutes, and you meet with us for 20 minutes. I'll prove to you in the Bible that you don't go to heaven; you get a soul sleep, right?" So we went and met with the guy, couldn't prove it. We showed him scripture, showed him he's wrong. Uh, he said, oh, give us an hour. <laughs> give that, or 20 minutes turned into an hour. Give, just give us two hours. You can't. Context. So what I like to do is there's a lot of things going on in different belief systems and things like that. And sometimes people are just confused, amen. They don't know. If they, when they die, they go to heaven. They don't know if they, when they die, they go to this soul sleep thing. They don't know if they die. The Catholic Church is telling people they go to some kind of purgatory, all kinds of crazy things, right? So just want to take some scripture things when it comes to that. So in Luke 24, 51 through 52, Jesus said in, in verse 51, while he, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So where does this, the scripture say Jesus is? He says, or he went to heaven, right? So Jesus is plainly in heaven. Now we have the Holy Spirit that's here with us. The Holy Spirit is God's presence here on earth. And he's the one that dwells in us. He's the one that teaches us. He's the one that comforts us. He's the one that gives us joy and discernment and things like that. But Jesus ascended up into heaven. And in John 14, verses 1 through 3, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself. Where I am, there you may also be. Amen. So Jesus tells us that he went. He would, the scripture tells us he has ascended into heaven. He tells us that he's going to prepare a place for us, right? And he also says that where I am, there you may also be. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, and Jesus is talking about the things we're doing here on earth. And a lot of times our focus is on building treasures here on earth, right? We want nice houses, we want nice cars, things like that. And Jesus is talking and he says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. So Jesus is talking to his people and he's saying, you know, let's focus on building treasures in heaven. Amen. So if, if we don't die and go to heaven, what good is, us, is it for us to focus on building treasures for heaven? Amen. Peter, he says in 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. So here again we have this reference to our treasures in heaven. Amen. But I want you to notice something there. It says, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved for you who are kept by the power of God. Amen. That, there's, an, there's another issue. People are trying to convince you that you have to keep yourself. You have to keep your salvation yourself with your good works and good deeds and things like that. The scripture teaches that Christ in you, Christ, the Holy Spirit, he empowers you to live a life that's pleasing to God. We find our righteousness in him. Right? When we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, He becomes our righteousness. And He becomes the one that changes our natures and our desires. Amen. As we learn more of the Word of God and as we continue to have fellowship and as we pray and seek God for wisdom and guidance and direction, He begins to change our nature. Amen. And it's His power that works in us to help us live right. Amen. And, and we can't lose what God has given us. Right? So as we walk through this earth, as we walk through this lifetime, and our focus stays on kingdom things, and as people get saved, and as we help advance the kingdom that we're earning, we're not doing it to earn necessarily earn treasures. Like when we go around and we do things, we're, we're not necessarily trying to earn treasures in heaven, but that's just something that naturally God does for us. He earn, we earn things in heaven, but our focus is driven by Christ, right? Driven by the Holy Spirit. Our desires, our actions are all driven by Him. Amen. Or it's not like we're trying to, to win a prize when we get to heaven. It's just Christ working in us and building those prizes, those treasures in heaven. But those things are incorruptible and undefiled and fade if not away. Amen. So one of the, the most interesting things that I find you know, when it comes to this whole subject of where we're going to go when we die, is some of the words that the Apostle Paul spoke himself. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthian church, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So the Apostle Paul is, is telling us that as a believer, as a Christian believer, when you, your spirit leaves your body, this is just a tent. 
right? This flesh that you see here is just a tank that my soul and my spirit live in. And one day when this body dies, it stops functioning, stops operating, my spirit and my soul are going to leave this body. Amen? And this body is going to turn to dust. But when it leaves this body, it's going to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Scripture doesn't, the Apostle Paul doesn't say that uh, we're confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body is to be in purgatory. It's not what it says, right? It doesn't say uh, anything like that. It doesn't say that your soul will be asleep laying on the ground somewhere, right? It says that your, your spirit and your soul are going to go to be in the presence of God. Amen. The other thing he says, which I found very interesting myself in Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 21 through 25, says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in, this, in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which, there he's talking about, he's, he's alive here on earth, and he's fruitful labor, building treasures in heaven. He's not living according to the flesh. He's living to God's will, and he's building fruitful, his labors, but fruitful, building treasures in heaven. Amen. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you according, your, for your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. So what the Apostle Paul is struggling with here, right? The Apostle Paul is talking about being torn. He's being he's torn whether he wants to be with the Lord because he's saying that's far better. He wants to be in heaven. He wants to be with the, in the presence of God. Or should he stay here on earth and continue teaching the word of God, which is necessary for us? Amen. Now, if the Apostle, the Apostle Paul knows truth, he, he met Christ, he, he knows truth, he's teaching truth, and God's using him in a mighty way, and he's saying that he's torn. What would he be, if, if, if man just died and went to some kind of soul sleep, what would he be torn about, right? If, if he knew truth and he thought that when I die, I'm just going to go to some kind of soul sleep, then there wouldn't be anything to be torn about. He would want to stay here and just continue to teach the word of God and help advance the kingdom. But he was torn because he, he wanted to go home and be with the Lord, but yet he wanted to be here on earth and continue to advance the kingdom. So if you're going to die and go to some kind of soul sleep, there's nothing to be torn about. I'm just going to want to be here and advance the kingdom, right? So there's two things that the, uh, the Apostle Paul was talking about. And one... He said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the other thing he was struggling with was going on to be with the Lord or staying here. So to me, that, that's pretty convincing that when we die, we're going to be, to be with God in heaven. We're not going to go to some kind of soul sleep or purgatory or anything like that. Amen. So just to, re, just to recap, uh, you can go to the slide with the yellow words already. So when we die, right, Jesus is in heaven. Where is Jesus? He's in heaven. He went to prepare a place for us. And Jesus said that where I am, there you may be also. The apostle Paul said to be absent from the Lord is to be present. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He also said he was torn between two things, staying here on earth and continuing to teach or going home to be with the Lord. And Peter talks about our inheritance being incorruptible and undefiled. Now, the next scripture I, I'd like to share is when Jesus was talk was when he was hanging on the cross, right between two criminals. And that scripture reference is Luke twenty three verses thirty nine through forty three. One of the criminals who were hanged railing at him says. 
are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. So here's two thieves and they're hanging on a cross, right? And the one, he's basically looking at Jesus and he's mocking Christ, amen? He's making fun of him. He's saying, aren't you, aren't you God? Aren't you Christ? And the other, the other criminal is looking at Christ and he's saying, hey, remember me when you get into, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looks to him and he says, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Amen. He doesn't, Jesus doesn't say to this guy, well, when you, when, you know, people say enough alms for you and you pay enough money to the church, we'll get you out of purgatory and you can come be in paradise. That's not what he says. He doesn't say, you know, well, you know, after your soul sleeps till I decide to come back, I'll raise you up and you can come be with me in paradise. Jesus says, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Amen. And when you look up the word paradise in the, in the, the Greek, it's talking about the upper regions of heaven. Amen. So paradise here is referring to God, Jesus being in heaven. Now, there, there's, one, there's one thing we have to do, you know, to go to heaven, and that's to trust Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. We have to acknowledge the fact that we're sinners, right, in need of a Savior, and that Jesus Christ paid for our sin debt, and he paid it in full. And we need to place our faith and trust in him and him alone for our salvation. Amen. And when you do that, the scripture says that you become born again. You become born into his family. And then your, your home is made with him in heaven. But the thing is, there is two places where we got to face the reality of it, right? And Luke 19, 24 through 25 says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, man also died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame So, next slide, Marty. So, listen, the reality is when we die, right, our spirit leaves our body, our soul leaves our body, but there's one or two places we're headed. Amen. And the question becomes, you know, which side of the cross are you on? Amen. Are you on the side of the cross where you know you're convicted of a, of a crime that needs to be paid for? And you're looking to Jesus and you're saying, Jesus, I, re I receive your payment for my sin debt and placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ or are you going to be on the other side of the cross or are you just going to mock him and reject him? Amen. Listen, there's, there's, there's no better time than to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's, there's no way. Once you take your last breath, last breath, and you step into eternity, there's nothing you can do to change anything. It's all done. Amen. And uh, you want to be with, you want to go to heaven when we die, right? I mean, when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was about eight years old. And I heard a preacher uh, probably about three, four years ago, and he was. <laughs> He was complaining that people were uh, preaching about hell, you know, and he was saying, scare people into uh, 
trust in Jesus as their Savior. They're not really coming to Christ for the right reason. They're coming to Christ because they're afraid to go to hell. Listen, when I was eight years old, I was sitting in a, in a Sunday. It was a child, uh, what do you call it, vacation Bible school, right? <laughs> and there was, a, there was a guy there, he's a ventriloquist, and he had a Bible, and he did this little skit, you know, between the between him and this puppet. And I tell you, they were talking about heaven, they were talking about hell, and they were talking about sin and Christ dying for our sin. And I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior at the age of about eight years old. And I tell you, I heard hell being preached, but that's not why I came to Christ, right? I came to Christ because I felt the conviction in my heart that I was a sinner in need of a Savior. Amen? I, I knew that I was a sinner. I wasn't, it wasn't that I was afraid to go to hell. It was because I knew that I was a sinner in need of a Savior. Amen? And that's what we need today. We, we can't want to come to Jesus because there's the reality of hell. We come to Jesus because we know that we're sinners in need of a Savior. Amen? And when you place your faith and trust in him, he erases all your sin. The scripture talks about throwing your, your sin in the sea of forgetfulness and he remembers it no more. You, you become born again, you become a new creation, the, the scripture talks, teaches that you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're something that never existed before. And, there, and the scripture also says, there is now therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, I want to encourage you, if there's never been a time in your life that you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to do so today. Amen. We got, you know, I don't, I want everybody to be in heaven, right? That's what, that's what this is all about, developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to do that. If you don't know how to do that, if you're not sure how to do that, come, come see me after the service or see Pastor Jim or uh, someone else and we'll take you through and we'll, we'll pray and give you an opportunity to do that. Amen. Amen. That's all I got. <laughs> well, actually. Actually, I do have, I do have another scripture. <laughs> if you want to hear it. Preach it. All right. Let's hear it, right? So this, this is talking about, this was put on my heart a couple weeks ago. I wasn't sure if I was going to use it today or not, but it, it keeps coming back to me, so we're going to, I guess we'll, we'll read it. Amen. Amen. comes out of Genesis 32, chapter 32, uh, verses <laughs> 22 to 32. And it's, it's talking about when Jacob wrestled with God. So verse 22, the same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of Jebuk. He took them and set them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone and, the man wrestled, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for today has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with man and have prevailed. But Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And so Jacob called him. I've seen God 